Hello, Alana. Hi. Thank you so much for coming on my podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Me too. I, we, okay, so I had you on my podcast forever ago. Forever, like 2021, I was in my parents' old house, which they sold. Okay. Yes. You were, I think, recently let go of Hinge or were, it was yeah. like, oh my God. Wasn't it? Or when were you? Yeah. No, it was, we probably recorded like November, December mm-hmm. of 2020. 2020. No, I think it was 2020. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. Oh my God. Yeah. It was, wow. The fact that that's like four years ago. <laughs> well, I guess three, three years and a few months, but that's crazy. No, it had to be 2021. And I don't think so because I was in my parents' house and I, I moved to Miami in 2021 in April. Oh my God. So it was either very beginning of 2021 yeah, or end or of 2020. End. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So long time ago. I remember hearing your like origin story, like the hinge origin mm. story of it, you being let go and like starting your podcast after that. But I want to give like a little refresher because I know that's like a huge part of what you do today. So you have two podcasts right now. Yeah. You're a podcaster, I would consider you know, like that's your your title. But before you were working at Hinge, what were you doing at Hinge and like how did that lead to starting your first podcast? Yeah, so I was Hinge's lead content creator, which meant a lot of things, but the main thing was I was really running their social media and creating video content to help people with their dating lives and to help people find success on the app and while I was there, I started a podcast for them called Dating Sucks, which was really like a light bulb moment of like, oh my God, this is what I love to do. This is how I can connect with people and really make an impact. But when I first started at Hinge, I was very much like my personal life is off the table. I'm not talking about that in content. I'm not talking about my dating life. Like that's for me. Part of it was I never wanted someone to not want to date me because of Mm -hmm. what I did. Yeah. But I also just, I didn't know how to like be vulnerable in that way. Like very few people were doing it. And fast forward about a year into the job, I was going through a breakup and I had this moment where like I was literally sitting in this hotel room in Los Angeles where my ex had just dumped me and I had just finished crying and I'm like, I have to get back to work. And I couldn't just like go on the Hinge Instagram story and like encourage people. It was like, I was like, oh my God, like what just happened? I'm heartbroken right now. Like I'm never going to be okay. I hate everything. I hate dating. Yeah. And I ended up recording a video of myself like still like puffy teary eyed sharing like hey I know you guys usually ask me for advice I'm kind of turning the tables like you probably didn't know but I was in a relationship now I'm not and I feel like really scared and alone and hopeless like what advice can you guys give me and it was a huge turning point for me where the floodgates opened of people DMing emailing reaching out not giving me advice but thanking me Wow. And that this was on Hinge's account or your personal? On Hinge's account. Wow. So you were sending it to like, was it like millions at the time or was it like It was thousands? like a few hundred thousand. But Dang. it was just showing the side of dating that was so real and relatable that everyone was going through. But everyone goes on social media and just sees like happy couples or yeah. people just having the best time with life. And everyone feels so alone in their struggles. And so me going out there and showing like, hey – it's really hard and I feel really alone and scared and hopeless in my dating life right now. It made the biggest difference. And from there, I kind of just hit the ground running with being vulnerable about my dating life and how it was impacting me. Yeah, because I feel like a lot of people will either talk about like, oh, I went through a breakup a few years ago. It sucked. It was awful. But no one really like films in the moment. Mm -hmm. Like people aren't setting up the camera because it's awkward to like set up. You're crying and you're like, wait, let me just set up the camera real quick. Like, but I, so I went through a breakup a year and a half ago and I filmed, it wasn't the exact week we broke up, but it was like two weeks later when I was still like really emotional and upset about it. And so. the car video? Um, I think I was. I was in it. It was a vlog. So yeah. it was like you were in the ca- the car for part of it. Yes, I yeah. was. I was like grocery shopping and I was like crying at the grocery store and I was vlogging in the car in the parking lot being like, well, that's the first crying at the grocery store Yep. because I was like me and him always used to go grocery <laughs> shopping together. <laughs> and so I filmed that and it was it was awkward setting up the camera. But like every time I cried, I would like take my camera out or I would like take my phone out and like take a picture or something. And even though it feels really awkward because you're like, why are you doing that? I just knew that not only would it help other people like not feel less alone, but it helped me because I looked back at that video recently and I was like, I'm just going to rewatch this video. I hadn't rewatched it since I uploaded it, but it was a 
a few weeks ago and I was like, let me rewatch it. And the growth I've seen from me then to now, like I wish I could tell that girl that was crying a year and a half ago and be like, your life is going to be fine. Like you're actually going to have a really great year. You're going to be really happy. You're going to, you know, like it really does get better. But seeing that was like so reassuring to me because we're seeing old pictures of me crying because I'm like, wow, like I haven't cried about this breakup in months. Like it's been forever, you know? No, it's really amazing what can happen when you see yourself go through all these different stages. Like I can't believe, like it's so special to me that my podcast like chronicles me from like being single to now like almost being married. It's so crazy to like look back at single Alana who is struggling so much. And like, I just wish, like you said, like I wish I could go back and tell myself at so many different phases through my twenties, like it's all going to work out. Like Mm -hmm. it really is. And all of your fears, like you're, you're working towards exactly where you need to be. And as much as like, I wish I could go and and tell myself that. I just am like so proud of all of the shit I went through and how I came out stronger every time. And it's just so cool that we have all of that like documented. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm like so glad that I documented that process. I'm so glad that I like wrote down, I I journaled a ton, like just that was where I got like really open and honest, Mm -hmm. you know, but like I don't know. It's just um, I I can't wait to also like pass that on to like my kids. And because like for me, obviously, like I talked to my mom and like my family when I was going through that. But it's hard to picture your parents like getting it, you know, because it's like you're older now. You've been married for so long that you probably have never like you just don't think of them as like in their 20s or like Mm. young. And so I really want to have like these video diaries or like the journals that I'm writing and like give them to my kids. And hopefully I have a daughter and I can be like, your mom went through what you're going through, you know, and like she can like read that and hopefully feel better. I love that so much. And that's so true. I think about that often where now like I'm almost 30. Yeah. And like I just told you, like my best friend just had a baby. And it's so crazy to think about like when we're kids, I remember thinking like, well, my there's no world in which my parents would have any idea mm-hmm. what high school is like right. because they're ancient. Like, exactly. But I don't feel like an adult and I'm about to get married and then like have kids and live that life. And it's so funny that like in 10, 15 years, my kids could be thinking that about me. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, like I did live all of these experiences. Like I actually do get it. I know. It's like the like when you think about your teachers growing up mm-hmm. where you're like, there's no way that their their life was just school. Like they didn't yeah. do anything. And like one of my best friends is a kindergarten teacher. And like if she goes out with us or she's like hungover or yep. something, I'm like, <laughs> whoa, like our teachers would go and have fun and like probably be hung over teaching us sometimes. They literally like, had a full life outside of our classroom. Yes. I'm like how like when we were young we were like they're like so old and wise and mm-hmm. mature and now I'm like oh like we're my friends are teachers and I see what they do on the weekend. Yeah exactly. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. So you had your Hinge podcast and then you were let go because they scrapped like the content yeah. strategy, right? Like they just yeah, like social didn't. media, all that. Yeah. So was that moment, like that exact moment is when you were like, I'm going to start a podcast? Literally in the Zoom chat with my CMO and the head of HR as I'm getting let go, texting my friends saying, I just got fired. I'm starting a podcast. Wow. So it's like instantaneous. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And I also knew my last six months at Hinge, I felt very like creatively stunted and held back. And when I started there, it was fully a startup and I was the 34th employee. And by the time I left or was kicked out the door, there were like over 100 people. It had been acquired by Match Group, which is like a major corporation. And every idea I had at first, it was like, if you have an idea, like go see it through and and see what happens, throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. And it was like, okay, you have an idea. Okay. Next quarter, you can make a 40 slide deck and we can like maybe consider it. And maybe a quarter after that, we'll see if it's possible. And then like maybe next year. And that's just how behind it is. Yeah. And so I felt so like, I just was just being told no at every corner. And I had this gut feeling that if I went to another job, First of all, I didn't know how I'd find another company to hire me to do what I was doing there that I found that I loved. I was like, okay, I could maybe like pitch myself to Barstool or Betches. But at this point, 
I had no confidence because of mm-hmm. how many times I was being told no. So I couldn't even fathom doing that. And I just knew if I went to another company as like a social media manager or creator of some sort, I'd end up feeling the same way that I mm-hmm. felt there. And I was like, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to do this. I'll freelance. I have enough skills. I can do social media, podcast production, all these things for other people to pay the bills. And I know what I want to do. I'm going to make it happen. And I said I'd give myself six months. And I never looked back at a six-month mark. Wow. That's incredible. That's when you know that like you're doing what you're meant to do when you have a benchmark and then you don't even like Mm -hmm. go to check if that's you know, like if you completed it because you love what you're doing so much. Yeah. Or you just know it's like it's, it's working. doing well. Yeah. yeah. Or it's working. Yeah. And so when you started, it was originally called seeing other people, right? It was always seeing other people. Dating sucks was with Hinge. Yes. And then, and then seeing other people was January your 2021 brand new baby born. Okay. So yeah, we must have going back. We must have recorded in 2021 because I think you had seeing other people. It was probably then. Like right when it started. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you first had it, what was that like going where did you have like zero listeners at first or did you bring a lot of people from Hinge? Like how was that transition? Because I think that's the hardest part where so many people want to start something, mm-hmm. but they don't want to start at zero, which yeah. sorry, you have to. But how was that for you? And like, how did you get over that? I was really fortunate that I was in this position where Dating Sucks was pretty successful and there were a lot of people for months asking me like, when's it coming back? When's it coming back? Where is the podcast? Like, we miss it. We want to hear from you. And so they were really excited when I announced seeing other people where it wasn't starting from zero. And I was really lucky that so many of those people stuck around, but that is, it wasn't just luck. It was because they were the audience that I built and cultivated and they came back for me. Mm -hmm. And so I felt really lucky to have this built in listener base, like family almost that was like ready to welcome me back with open arms. It's not to say it was an overnight success. I mean, I've been doing it for three years and I still, there's like miles and miles more I want to go with it, but it was great to come back and see that there were people who were excited about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you first started seeing other people, you were recently single, right? So how was your like podcast all about being single and dating and having other people on dating? Like how did that, what was the format of it? Yeah. I wouldn't say I was actually recently single when I started seeing other people. I'd probably been single for like a year and a a year at that point. Oh, okay. Maybe a year and a half. Um, But yeah, in the beginning, so I had a co-host at the t- in the beginning of seeing other people. Really? Wait, I didn't mm-hmm. know that. Yeah. I thought it was just you for a No, we had, I had a co-host for like the first five months. And he was my co-host for Dating Sucks also. Oh, okay. Yeah, shout out Jonah Feingold, incredibly successful director and, and screenwriter now. Did you see Xmas on Amazon Prime? Um, I've seen like the previews of it, but yeah, I haven't seen Lade it. Yeah, with Laden Easter and Robbie Amell. Uh, he directed it. Wow, yeah, that's so incredible. Yeah, so he's like, he's crushing it. He left to like really go pursue that. Um, but... Yeah, so I had he was my co-host and it's so funny like the beginning of seeing other people is literally me being miserable and <laughs> miserably single okay. in my dating life like hopeless making mistakes left and right and that's what dating sucks was too and it's funny seeing other people came out on I think January 2nd or 3rd of 2021 I matched with Jake on January 8th of 2021 of 2021 wow and we had our first date on February 8th So you really see the progression of your relationship on that podcast. So much. And it was interesting dating Jake at that time because I was talking about like going on dates with other people on the podcast and he was listening to that. And (laughs) there was, I remember this one point where we had a, like a breakup coach come on and Jonah literally said on the podcast, if anyone listening is trying to date Alana right now, don't even bother because she's not over her ex. (gasps) Oh. Oh my God. Wait. Okay. I need to talk about like, how did you get over the fear of people of like sharing that while you're dating people that are watching or listening to the podcast? Because that is what I would like, if I ever talk about a dating experience, I always try to do it like way after it's happened because I don't want that person to like think, like stalk me that week and be Mm -hmm. like, oh. (laughs) No, me too. And I, I think I've done a very good job at that. And I'm always thoughtful of like, I would never make it obvious who the person was yeah. or like spill someone's dirty laundry. But I think this was just overall more so like overall feelings or like struggles as opposed to like this guy said this thing on this date that I went on on right. Tuesday. Right. Um, but when Jonah said that, I was like, 
yikes. And, and I you kept cut it, it in? I yeah, I was going to say, out. did you cut it? I kept it in, but it was like, I think that's one thing about my relationship that's so special is like, we really were like communicative and just trusting in each other. And like Jake listened to that. Like he did hear that. And he chose to, you know, give me the benefit of the doubt and continue on based on like my words and my actions with him versus like what he heard on this podcast. And I really, really appreciated that. Did he bring it up? Was he like, hey, I heard that you're not over your ex on your podcast. We talked about it at one point. I think it was like a long time after. And he had said like, yeah, he heard that. But like, that's not what he was seeing from me. Okay. Wow. I love that. That he was like so confident though. That's like very, that's such a good sign and like such a good sign of a healthy relationship that Mm -hmm. he's not like being passive aggressive or like holding it against you because it's also your job like to talk about dating. So if someone is going to date you, they have to be supportive of you talking about that. Yeah. Did that, were, were a lot of guys that you went on dates with kind of like did they make comments that were like, oh, I, are you going to talk about me on your podcast? Oh, my God. All the time. And I used to, I would like mess with them. I'd be like, oh, I'm like live tweeting our date right now. And they were like, wait, really? And they were excited <laughs> about it for the most part. But um, no, this one guy, he was the biggest asshole to me. And he l- literally said, are you going to talk about me on the podcast? And this was after like a two hour long date where I felt like I was being psychoanalyzed and judged the entire time. And why I, was he like, what was he saying? He was like digging into every little thing. And like we we talked about dating and I, I'm a huge fan of talking about dating on dates. But he was like being very judgmental of everything that I was saying and like questioning or making me second guess myself. And he asked if I was in therapy and he told me that I should like go to more therapy. Straight d- dead ass. And then this he, is the first date. This is the first date. And then he literally says, this is January of 2021. He says, are you going to talk about me on the podcast? And I said, yeah, I'm going to talk about a guy I went on a date with who told me I needed to be in therapy. That is ridiculous. Like that is, yeah. Like where does he think that he has the right to tell you that when he doesn't know you at all? No. And then, first of all, he's not a therapist either. (laughs) But then I don't text him. A week later, he texts me saying, I'm surprised you didn't text me asking for a second date. <gasps> like, what? You're surprised? Really? No. Why? Oh, Why are you surprised? <laughs> not even that, but the cockiness. You should. Did, did you respond? No. Good. Because either I would want to have like respond something like really mean, um, be like, why would I want to go on a date that and just be like insert mean quote there. Mm-hmm. But then I'm like, you know what? Don't stoop down to that level. Um. But yeah, a no response is good because you know his ego was probably like, wonder what she's gonna say to this. Like, yeah, right. You know, like, and if you if you were angry in the text back, he would have been like, oh, she like was. I got her so upset. Like, it would be like an ego thing still. So just you straight up ignoring him, I think probably hurt him a little more. I think I used to be very reactive, and I've gotten a lot better at like not responding when I feel really deeply about something or like when I'm angry or upset and I think that for me it's a really good thing that I've been able to do that but the then the thing is like I won't respond to something and I'll spend two months thinking of all the things I could have said yeah like I still can say them but I'm still not going to yeah but it'll like ruminate for so long yeah you know he's probably listened to multiple of your episodes being like when is she going to talk about me and like what's she going to say he signed up for mine and Carly's matchmaking no. <laughs> Carly was like, oh, like, should we work with this guy? And I was like, no, we should not. He signed up for your matchmaking? Yeah. That is, what did he do for work? I don't remember. You know, okay. Something I'm like, like businessy. Okay. Um, I, just wondering. But like, that is <laughs> so insane. You know, he's your biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, insert yeah. name here. <laughs> That's crazy. So, okay, besides, like, let's say that example, was it pretty easy to date or did you start dating your now fiancé and, like, that was the only guy you dated? Did you have, like, a roster? Did you go and date some multiple people? Like, what was it like in the beginning? In the beginning, so, like, let's go back to, like, 2020 dating. So, pandemic, going to the pandemic, I had met this guy. We went on eight dates and then COVID broke out. 
Mm. And I was like, this is going somewhere. Like, this is going to be serious. And we ended up like being in this like long distance virtual relationship for like five months. Wow. Like talked every single day, had virtual date nights, met each other's friends and family on like Zoom group chats. Um, And he ended up coming to see me and like meet my parents. Wow. And it was our first time seeing each other in like five months. And it felt a little off like this whole thing was like built up over so long and then we had nothing to talk about when we were finally in person because we had been talking every second of every day and I was supposed to go spend a week with him at like two weeks later with him and his family and he ended up calling it off in between and just being like I need to like focus on myself like it's really not you it's me and this was the first time where I was like It actually wasn't me. Like, I did nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. But I tried so hard to, like, figure out what I did wrong. But I was like, no, I didn't do anything wrong. Fast forward that situation. um, He – I was the last girl he dated. Mm -hmm. He came out two years later. Oh, okay. And he actually, like, told me that dating me helped me – helped him, like, realize that he was actually gay. Really? Like, because – did he, like – explain yeah I actually had him on the podcast oh my god I need to listen to that episode yeah but he was like you were everything I would have wanted in a girl and like something was missing and it was nothing that like you could give me yeah and I just realized like if this girl's here and like is literally everything I would possibly want for myself and I I can't get there then it must not be it Mm -hmm. and he met someone shortly after he's in an amazing relationship now um but so after that once like COVID started getting a little better and I started coming back to the city, I started going on dates as much as I could with still being con- like COVID conscious. Yeah. Um, but I, I never really had a roster. I mean, there were definitely times in my 20s where my friends and I had like shared Excel spreadsheets of the different guys we were going on dates with. And it's funny to look back at those. But it's hilarious. I really wanted to find someone. Like I was never like, oh, I'm going to date as many people as I can. I was always like dating to find somebody and I don't know like some things would it would be like one date and that would be it or it would make it to a few dates and then it would fizzle out um when I met Jake I was I think two dates in with another guy Mm -hmm. who I was obsessed with really obsessed did he like you the other guy other guy well (laughs) (laughs) um I remember my co-host Jonah at the time was like seeing me obsess and like panic and stare at my phone waiting for this guy to text me and freaking out of like when are we going to see each other again like he hasn't asked about the next day but like we're still talking and he was like oh like you are so like going crazy over this guy but like like why do you like him like tell me and I'm like it doesn't matter like you just do I just do and he's like well like do you and I'm like what do you mean do I like him he's like well do you like him or do you just like want him to like you and I was like, well, why does it matter if I like him if he doesn't like me? And he was like, well, you can't even tell me that you like this guy. Yeah. That's like such a big realization that I had. Like I actually talked about this, I think, in my YouTube video that's going to go out in a few days or weeks. But it's about how like all the so many times we go into dates, especially women, where we're like, oh, my God, like I just really want them to like me. I want them to like me. I want them to like me. I have to look perfect. I have to do this. I have to do that. I can't be too eager. I can't be that. And it's all about do they like me? Mm -hmm. And if they don't like us, we're so upset. Whereas I don't think maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think guys do that as frequently as women. Guys will go into a date and they are just saying like, "Uh, I don't like this about her or, oh, this is nice. Like, it's all about what they if if they like the person. They're yeah. not worried about the girl liking them if they don't like the girl. And that's the way it should be. Like honestly, like we need to start acting like that because who cares if they like us? And who cares if they don't like us if we don't like them, you know? And who cares if they like us if we're not being ourselves? E- exactly. Yeah, because it's like we like sometimes I feel like our ego gets in the way where we're just like, we just want you to think that we're hot, to think that we're cool, to think that we're, you know, like the cool girl monologue Mm -hmm. from Gone Girl. It's like that where it's like, oh yeah, I'm like so chill and I'm like one of the guys, but yet I dress up and I, you know, wear the no makeup makeup look and my hair always looks perfect just rolling out of bed and then I can eat hot dogs and hamburgers and beer. And, you know, it's like that is the the way that I think so many women go into dating and like we've all fallen victim to that where it's like 
that's why like whenever I am like now date like going on dates or something I'm like I'm just gonna be a hundred percent myself I'm gonna talk about what I do for work I'm gonna talk about you know my life and me being a creator and not being like ashamed about that and if they don't like me then like why the heck would I even like entertain them like that's no. just like like if they don't like that part like my true self then like I'm not going to pretend to be someone I'm not. And it's like a hard pill to swallow and hard to put into practice, I think. It's so hard, but it's so important because why would you want to be with somebody who doesn't embrace and accept you for all the things you are? And that's one thing I realized, like when I met Jake, he was so excited about Mm -hmm. everything I did. He was a big and still is a big Jared Fried fan. Mm -hmm. So having listened to Jared for so many years, he thought it was awesome what I was doing and Mm -hmm. like really cool that I was setting out to like do this thing. And he was so supportive. He started listening to every episode and I was like, wow, like I would have thought I had to like beg a guy to listen to an episode. And I think it helped that I was on our first date. I was able to tell him that I was like having Jared on like two weeks later. So he like thought I was the coolest person in the world. Um, But yeah, someone recently said to me, because we, we've definitely heard the phrase like stop asking, do they like me and start asking, do I like them? Someone brought this to me and I thought it was really profound. Stop asking, how do I feel about them? And start asking, how do they make me feel? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, like how do I enjoy spending time with them? Am I happy after a date or am I anxious? Like Mm -hmm. I think, I know you talk about this a lot in your podcast, but it's like, if you are very anxious and you're, you know, freaking out and, oh my God, they're not texting me or things are complicated and it's really early on, it's probably not meant to be because it. it should be easy. Like it's, I remember, so like when me and my boyfriend were dating, that was a very healthy relationship. Like there was, I have no bad things to say. It just like didn't work out. But I just remember it was so easy in the beginning. Like I never had to like guess if he was interested. I didn't have to like wait for a text. Mm-hmm. I didn't, you know, and so now that I'm dating, like four years after that really or four years later and like single for the first time and I'm going on dates with these guys and I'm starting to like be like oh they didn't text me back or they and I'm like it's not meant to be then like I'm not gonna force it and like I'm not someone that's like okay well maybe I I should I should text them just to like see or I should because I think in the beginning the guy should like make the dates and like make the plans so I'm like traditionalist in that sense and I'm like I don't want to be with someone that's not excited about me in the beginning because I know the way that guys are and if a guy likes you, he will make it obvious. Like guys are not sneaky. Like they're very obvious about, I mean, they're sneaky in other ways, but like sneaky (laughs) in the sense of like, oh, I'm going to try to play it cool and act like I don't like her, but really I'm into her. Yeah. They're not thinking about it the same way we are. They're like, oh, if I like her, I'll try and see her again. Yeah. That's it. Exactly. They're very simple. Yeah. And so if a guy is not making plans with you, if he's not interested or if he's not like texting you if he is you know very wishy-washy and everything's like oh we should do something yeah and then never makes a plan Mm -hmm. he doesn't like you yeah and that's okay and that's totally fine we have to learn to let go and just be like okay like not for me that's fine I'm not for them like you're not going to be for everybody and not everybody's going to be for you and yeah I think the biggest problem is we are so quick to like future trip Mm -hmm. and to say, oh, well, on our first date, we talked about doing this thing. So like now I know that they want to do this thing with me. And like, like if they're not texting me, like it's okay because they said they want to do this thing. Or, well, I've already tried on their last name with my first name for size (laughs) and it sounded great. Or we just start getting excited about the potential of somebody. So when we're not hearing from them, we're still thinking about what it could possibly be, even if we're just thinking about that from what we've completely made up in our head and it's not representative of what's actually happening. Yeah. And yeah. that's all of this is exactly what happened with that guy I was obsessed with where I was, if I, I was thinking about how I felt about him, I was obsessed with him. How did he make me feel? So freaking anxious mm-hmm. and uneasy and uh, not confident. Mm-hmm. And then when I met Jake and I was never good at like, dating multiple people at the same time like once I, I do that like once I made it to like a second or a third date with somebody like I was all in on them but it just so happened with the timing that like I was two dates in with him and then I met Jake and it was actually incredible for me to be able to compare the differences and it happened pretty organically where I just felt so comfortable and confident with Jake 
And he was communicative. And after our first date, he told me he wanted to see me again and made a plan. Mm -hmm. And after our second date, I was going away for two weeks. And he said, like, I know you're gone. I'd love to talk while you're away and see you when you're back. I love the communication because that is like it is not hard to communicate. And if someone is making you feel anxious or nervous or like, oh, embarrassed if you over if you communicate with them, like they're not for you because communication is like one of the most important things you can have in a relationship Mm -hmm. and they should show those traits early on or else it's probably not going to be a great relationship later down the line. 100%. And like, I'll be the first to admit I've been in terrible relationships in the past with horrible communication and I've accepted way less than I deserve. And with Jake, I think we just built such a strong foundation from the beginning where we are so aligned on so many things. And when we're not, like we've never yelled at each other we've never gotten into like a big blow up fight Mm -hmm. because we just talk about things yeah and like yeah sometimes like he'll be annoyed with me or I'll be annoyed with him and we'll just be like "Mm," like, yeah we'll express that yeah you talk about it yeah yeah and I think that's really because of how we started Mm -hmm. so when you met Jake was it only that one other guy that you had gone on a date with or did you ever like go on dates with other people no it was it was really a tough time like I met Jake before like our parents were just eligible for the vaccine. So okay. it was, that's why there was a month gap between when we matched on hinge and when we were able to go out with each other, because I was also back and forth going back to my parents' house and seeing my roommates. And so we decided like, we weren't going to see other people other than each other, unless like we were testing. And so this other guy I'd already seen and we were like testing before going on dates, whatever. Um, but I wasn't, I'm sure I was like talking to other people, like yeah. texting, but I also was about to go away for two weeks. Yeah. So to visit my family in Florida. Um, and it was actually really sweet. I ended up getting off of one week into my trip. I ended up getting a phone call on Friday night from some like nursing facility. And they said, we got an unexpected batch of vaccines. You're on our wait list. Can you be here tomorrow morning? For in Florida? In or- New York. Oh, in New York. And I said, Yes, I can. <laughs> Otherwise, I was going to get it for months. Yeah. And so I ended up texting Jake like, oh, like I'm coming back for like 36 hours. And he was like, oh, I'd like, love I to see, see you. Yeah. And he had he worked on the weekends and he got someone to cover his shift on Sunday so he could take me out. Uh, see, that's like that's what I'm saying. If someone likes you and if you are meant to be with that person, you will do what you can. And it's both ways. Like you yeah. were there for 36 hours and you wanted to see him too. Yeah. Like it wasn't like you were like, oh, uh, I really like you, but like, nah, let's wait another two weeks. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't do that if you liked the person. Yeah. And I remember being a little like, oh, this feels like a lot. Like, is this too much? Right. But I was like, you know what? It's really sweet. Like, why am I going to jump to conclusions? Like, why don't I just go have a good time? Right. Right. No, I think that's so sweet. And so now you guys are engaged. No, we're engaged. Uh, how long did you date before you got engaged? We were together for like two years. Okay. Yeah. Do you hear of a lot of like, like, I mean, know that you now you talk about like dating, obviously on your podcast and stuff. Do you feel like because you've been in a relationship now and you're engaged and you're married, like do people ever question like, you don't know what it's like right now? Or like, what do you get pushback from that? I do. And I've gotten comments recently of like, well, easy for you to say when you're like engaged. And I try really hard on my podcast and whenever I'm a guest on a podcast to recognize that there are new listeners or there are people who are learning me for the first time and they don't know my whole backstory. And so I never want anybody to look at me and just be like, oh, like she just snapped her fingers and like got everything she wanted. Yeah. And because that's not what happened. Like I was put through the ringer. I experienced heartbreak and pain from breakups more than I knew was possible. Mm-hmm. Like, I literally thought I was going to die. Oh. For, like, after my breakups. Same. Like, I was like, I would rather get shot than yeah. feel the way I feel. Yes. Like, it is the worst unimaginable pain. I was like, no one should experience was like, this. Like, please, a car, please hit me so yeah. I can, like, be in a coma. Yeah. It's the worst feeling in the world. It's horrible. And so I went through all of that. I went through the unhealthiest relationships that completely, like, put me into a deep depression. And so... I want people to understand that about me. And so I do try and like reference my past a lot in episodes. I've also gotten feedback saying like, oh, like she always talks about her past. Like, but 
you know, I can't, I can't, can't win. win. <laughs> and that's okay. But I, I do get that a lot. And I do respond and be like, listen, I totally get that. I'm, but try, like, I promise, like I went through so much. I'd love to tell you more about it. And like, I try and be open-minded because I know when I was single and in my feels and struggling, like I would get upset when I looked at people who just like looked like they had it all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, but definitely like, I think you have also amazing guests that talk about dating and that you can relate based on your own experiences. It's not like you've been married for like 20 years either, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> so I know, but I, I was wondering if you did get like pushback from that. Yeah. So I know that you have like a ton of guests on your podcast. You always talk about like what dating is like today and everything like that. Have you, what are some of like the biggest like dating red flags that you see, whether it's like online dating, in-person dating, or what are some also like after that, what are some things that you see that you're like, okay, this is like a good way to date or this is like a good way to respond or act when you're in the early stages? Like what are your takes on that? Okay. So let's start with profiles. So rewind. (laughs) Let me really start by saying like red flags. I feel like there's this social media obsession with them and we've gotten so quick to be like red flag like writing them off I want people to recognize like a red flag is a red flag it's not a deal breaker Mm -hmm. that's why it's a red flag and just because someone has a red flag that doesn't mean there's something wrong with them that doesn't mean that they can't potentially be a great partner for you like everybody is covered in red flags we're all covered in red flags and a red flag is just like a flag going up and saying to yourself okay I noticed this thing or they said this thing I'm not sure how I feel about it I have questions Let me explore that Mm -hmm. and see how I feel once I learn more. So keep that in mind. That said, there are behaviors and actions and just certain things that maybe I wouldn't recommend continuing to explore. Um, Dating app profiles. If you're looking for something serious, don't waste your time on people who have not filled out their entire profile or who have one word answers because they are not dating in an intentional way. They are not if they're not taking the time to actually fill out their profile, why are they going to take the time to put in effort with you? Yeah, that's actually so true. I never really thought about it that way because you can tell like when they have like nothing on there, they're just like hot. And it's like, okay, like I don't know anything about you. And you know that people don't know anything about you. You're just Mm -hmm. relying solely on looks. Like it's just like a hookup. Yeah, exactly. Probably, yeah. Exactly. I think it's a... It's so hard because I really am like there's no one list of red flags because everyone like your red flags are going to be different than my red flags because right. we have different pasts and we have different dating experiences. I what think, were some of your red flags? So my red flags list was also my red flags I ignored list. Okay. In in the past. In the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first and most important one being – they said they weren't looking for something serious. Okay, yeah. You always think you can change them, though. Like Every single time, challenge accepted. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to be so great that you're going to fall in love with me. Like, you know what I think tainted us is a walk to remember when she looks at him and, and she's like, promise me one thing, you won't fall in love with me. <laughs> yep. And it's like... Oh, and then he fell in love with her, you know, and he's like, I'm not looking for anything. I'm a bad boy. It's like blah, blah, every blah. single rom-com. Yes. And then they change and yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't like necessarily the first date they were telling me this on. Maybe like the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. And I'd be like, oh, well, that's that makes sense. Like they don't know me well enough to want me to be their girlfriend. Like why would they be ready to commit to me yet? Mm-hmm. Like and every single time it was followed by, but I love hanging out with you yep. and I'm down to keep hanging out if you are literally has happened to me before where I will straight up ask because I'm a very confrontational person so I am someone that I'm like okay so like what's up like (laughs) what are we doing you know and we're all just like ask like okay like how are you how are you feeling about this you know because I don't I get too much anxiety overthinking things yeah and so whenever I feel that way I'm just like I'm just gonna ask you Mm -hmm. like I'm just gonna say like hey like what's up because the worst case scenario is that they're like, I don't like you. And then great. I have my answer. Exactly. And I'm done. But 100%. the worst, actually, that's not the worst case. That The worst case is not asking, being confused for months yeah. and not knowing. And then finding out months later that they don't like you when you could have found that out earlier. So yep. always, always ask. I, <laughs> and people are so afraid too. But it feels terrible where you're at right now, sitting mm-hmm. there wondering and assuming and making things up and second guessing every single thing when 
they already know how they're feeling and mm-hmm. you know how you're feeling. So why don't you just talk about it? Yeah. And the sooner you get your answer, even if it's a no, then the sooner you can move on. Exactly. And that's why like we shouldn't be afraid of, again, like we were even talking about earlier, people not liking us because – I sometimes think about like the guys that I've gone on dates with that I didn't really like like and there was nothing wrong with them like it wasn't like oh they were rude they were mean they were this it was just like there wasn't a connection there for me and I think they're great people like would recommend to a friend like you seem like a great guy whatever there's just something that I'm like not for you it's just not for me and there's nothing against like it's nothing against them and so I'm like people are allowed to feel that way about me. Like Mm -hmm. not everyone in the world is going to like me. Yeah. And that's totally fine. Yeah, absolutely. I used to think it was a red flag if they had never had their heart broken before. And that was something that for me, it was like I had gone through such intense heartbreak Mm -hmm. that I was like, there's no world in which somebody would be able to relate to me and understand me if they hadn't Mm -hmm. been through that. And I later learned that heartbreak and struggle like is – can present itself in so many ways. And like Jake had never, you know, had his heart shattered by a girl he had dated before, but he had some really deep personal loss. Mm -hmm. And I learned that, you know, heartbreak comes in so many different forms. And I was kind of looking at it at the, in the wrong way. Yeah. That's a good realization to have. Mm -hmm. Cause like I, yeah, I feel like I'm not someone that's never even been something that I've like, thought about about like oh they have to have their heart broken I honestly so like I prefer I don't know if I prefer like obviously I'm at the age where like most people have had like a relationship at this point a ser- like semi-serious relationship at this point most people mm-hmm. um and I have too but I don't mind being like someone's first girlfriend like That's I right. actually like I'm like then you don't have to deal with like exes exactly. or like <laughs> comparing yourself yep. Look, I'm totally fine with being someone's first girlfriend. 100%. And just because somebody hasn't been in a romantic relationship before doesn't mean they don't have relationship experience. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I agree with that. Yeah. I think what I really learned, though, like the biggest thing in terms of red flags is like it's not necessarily traits about them, but it's how they're making you feel. And so going back to what we said before, like if somebody is making you feel more anxious than you were before you met them and started going on dates with them. That is the biggest red flag. Like, Mm -hmm. don't ignore that. Pay attention to that. Because when you're meeting somebody who you're considering as a potential partner, it should, like we said, like, it should be easy. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't be suddenly this, like, self-conscious shell of yourself. You should be feeling comfortable and confident. And if you're not, then that is, like, a giant waving flag saying this isn't it. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to it. How do you feel about like playing the game or no. like the chase? No. <laughs> I, I wholeheartedly believe that following dating rules, playing games are the best way to manipulate somebody into wanting to be with you, but you're manipulating them into wanting to be with a version of you that isn't actually you. Mm-hmm. And so what happens when they're finally with you and now you can't keep up this act anymore of being the chill girl, being the cool girl who's laid back and doesn't care about anything – suddenly you're going to be a completely different person. Yeah. And they're yeah. going to be like, wait, what? I totally agree. And like if the only reason why they like you is because they had to chase you when they have you, mm. what's next, you yeah. know? And then like that's why a lot of toxic relationships are constantly in this like up and down mm-hmm. because of that reason. Exactly. So no, I agree. I'm someone who I've had a lot. I've had a lot of friends that are like, well, you have to play the game a little bit. You have to do it. And I'm just like, that is not me. And if – I like I am not someone I can flirt I can have like you know banter once I know you if it's on a dating app though I have like zero game because like I'm like I don't know you I don't care about your day I don't care about what like I'm like I don't know what to say to you when I haven't met you in person yet but for me I'm like there no part of me wants to be like oh he texted me in 30 minutes I'm gonna wait an hour to look cool it's like Or like, oh, I'm just going to appear uninterested. Like, I'm not going to respond to this text even though I want to talk to them. Like, I'm like, if that makes me look desperate, okay. Like, I know I'm not acting desperate. I know I'm not, like, I'm just being friendly and I'm being myself. And if someone, like, takes that as, like, oh, that's boring, why would I want to be in that? There'd be no point. I want someone who wants to talk to me. I think you just have to – I think the biggest, like, dating rule – or not rule, but, like, method is – how do you like who the, think of your ideal person 
what are they going to like about you? They're going to like your honesty. They're going to like your communication. They're going to be supportive of your career. They're going to mm. have all of these things that they are excited about about you. They're going to be excited to talk to you and hang out with you. So why would you, when you're dating, try to like be hide totally different things. and yeah. hide those things? Yeah. So I, I just kind of like picture that and I'm like, if that is who I want to be with, someone who is like very excited about me. Yeah. I like to say like, talk to people you're dating the way you talk to your friends. Yeah. You're not rewriting your text 27 times and asking the whole group chat, what should I send to Natalie? Mm-hmm. You're just sending to Natalie like what your thoughts are or whatever you have to say. And, you know, people always say like, oh, like when should I text them? Whenever. Text them when you have something to say. Yeah, yeah. It's not that hard. It doesn't have to be that hard. Yeah. And all of these rules, all of these games, all of these do this, don't do that, and these sayings, like you just – Got to do what feels right for you. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. And then what are, I guess, the green flags? Besides, I guess, like making you feel good and like all of that, do you have any other green flags or is that just the biggest one? I think the way somebody treats the people around them, like the way they treat wait staff if you're at a restaurant, um, if they, you know, want to make sure you get home safe, Mm -hmm. whether it's like them dropping you off or them saying, hey, text me when you get home or following up to make sure you got home. I think those things are really considerate and just thoughtful. And like, that's the type of person that for me, like I want to be with Mm -hmm. someone who like treats others with respect and cares. Yeah. I think, you know, again, like the communication, like letting you know exactly where they're at. That's someone who's intentional and who doesn't want to waste your time or their time and who isn't afraid to say, Hey, I want to see you again. Yeah. And beyond that, I think just, pay like it's not that hard just think about do you want to see this person again and if you do go for it and if you don't don't yeah we overcomplicate things a lot and I hate I'm on the side of TikTok where it's like if a guy doesn't take you out to a nice dinner and pay a bunch of money and oh he's asking you for coffee no no no, coffee's not a date I it makes me so angry I'm like, do you want a sugar daddy or do right. you want a boyfriend? There are a lot of sugar daddies in my DMs trying to. I can yes. recommend them. I can send them all your way if you want that. I know. It makes me so disheartened because I'm like, what is important when it comes to – like, what are you looking for? Are you looking for someone to buy you things or are you looking for a relationship? Because yeah. you can get to know someone really well over a nice coffee at lunch or around lunchtime rather than like a really loud, expensive, bougie restaurant – where okay but at least you can say that you went to this like $200 restaurant and got the food there like what are you looking for I also I don't understand that side of things because for me I would feel guilty (gasps) I would hate it I would feel so uncomfortable and horrible and like what god forbid I don't want to see them again I know and I'm like I just wasted their time and money yeah no I I would not be okay with that Mm -hmm. I agree I I like (laughs) And I would feel like I owe them something. And I feel like that's why maybe some – I'm not saying all guys, but I'm saying some guys have a mentality where if they buy women things, they have a sense of ownership. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that they own you by any means, but I'm saying they are doing that because they mm-hmm. know that you will then owe them something or they want something from you yeah. rather than it genuinely being like, oh, I just really want to like treat you. Because if they're doing that with every girl that they take on a right. first date – what is the intention? Like the intention is not because they think you're special because they no. don't know you yet. Exactly. It is for another reason. Yeah. I can like, that's another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> endless, endless yeah. things. Yeah. You're coming back on seeing other people yeah. ASAP. <laughs> okay. Perfect. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. It's like, I just want to get to know someone and like, I don't know, see if we connect and see if we're, yeah, it should be easy. It yeah. should just be easy. You can go to the fancy dinners later. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much, Alana, for coming on my podcast. I love talking about dating. I love, especially being, okay, I keep saying newly single. I am not newly single. It's been a year and a half. That is so embarrassing. Um, It's not newly single, but first time in like a decade. So I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's new. Sure. People are probably like, um, you're pathetic. Get out. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming on my podcast. This was so much fun. I know we had some like delays and everything. You guys missed it. I don't I don't think it's that part's airing, but no. um I fully had like a, a hot flash and like I thought I was like sweating. I had to like take my sweater off and stick my head out the window and eat totally Natalie's fine. popcorn and like I was a disaster and, and she was great. So totally fine. No. See, this was this would have been a great date because I felt really comfortable being exactly. myself and I didn't have to play it cool. 
<laughs> exactly. Honestly, I have stories about that, like getting very comfortable very early on yeah. and like them seeing all sides of you. Yeah. yeah good test. Um, <laughs> but no, thank you so much for coming on. And where can they find you? Where can they find your multiple podcasts? We didn't even get to talk about the second one. I so know. life in progress. But we'll have you on for a part three. Technically, <laughs> I guess this is part two. <laughs> technically. I, don't, I need to go back and listen to part one. Um, thank you so much. You can listen to seeing other people. And Life in Progress, wherever you listen to podcasts. You can also check out my co-host for Life in Progress, Carly Silverman, wherever you want to find her. You can find me at Alana Dunn, wherever you want to find me. And yeah, if you want to find me, I'm pretty easy to be found. Yeah, same. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yay, Thanks for coming on. Thank you.